So, uh, back to this. I uh, thought that it could be interesting to um, combine um, uh, augmented reality technology with uh, augmented cryptography. That is to say, if my goal is to be able to uh, pick a tablet device, an iPad device, and overlap to a physical, to a, uh, an analogic photography, and by overlapping it, I can see the fluxes, the, the dynamics that are set on that photography, you understand? Yeah. So, uh, that was how the idea of augmented photography uh, came up. Uh, what we are trying to, to, to do is how to fit the um, um, the, 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 the augmented cryptography. It, we have a difficulty right now. Uh, that yesterday was already the uh, subject of uh, discussion in the last presentation. It was that you point out. It was, uh, as he said, last year movements, last year uh, information. But we have to deal with ongoing information. So how can I input ongoing information on augmented cryptography so that this kind of augmented cryptography is not a, a revisitation, dynamic revisitation of uh, last year fluxes? You understand? This is how this is our problem now because um, augmented reality deals with something that you put um, and when you uh, pick the, device, the, the digital device through the, the, the building or whatsoever, and the augmented information come up. My difficult now is how to put uh, augmented information through uh, cryptography that is not information from last year. So that's so why... Real time. Real time. Yeah, so that's why uh, how it's important for us, smartphones and uh, tracking devices and apps, because through that kind of approach, can have um, on-time uh, information. If, if you have a group of people that is available to collaborate with you, they can be constantly feed the uh, augmented information that you want to have to the uh, regular photography. This is where we are now. Uh, this, is, this is where I'm working with uh, Isabel to get an augmented photography uh, that is not augmented of the last year. She's a, she story about that. Yes. 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 Oh, it looks really nice. I really, I really like the doors. And uh, 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 back to the sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a frame of uh, of some of the tools that I work uh, within the, the work of the, the fieldwork of the students of the University of Maputo. Uh, and some of this was work with them and with the Michelage and uh, we produced this, but. Uh, um, uh, with also, I have also a, a, a very good help from a student of mine that is not here. He's in Tommy, so he will present tomorrow. Uh, from the data that we had, we he helped to, to produce this, this thing also. Uh, he's also working on processing as long as the uh, This is not processing, but this is the, the overall idea of the augmented project yeah. is how to put a iPad on a um, superimposed uh, yes. data. And uh, instead of only to see the, 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 the buildings and the streets, you see the um, places. You see things going on, you understand? Yeah. So the difficult that we are finding now is the uh, up to date of the information. Yeah. That's yes. the yes. But it's a really nice concept. Okay. And this this is uh, the idea is to overlap these different approaches, uh, integration, connectivity, measure, uh, for instance, it, and this is very useful for my students also. If I s say something about connectivity or integration to my students, they want yeah. If I put people <laughs> walking the street and uh, I compare their pattern, the, the video uh, was an uh, overlap. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yeah, the video. <laughs> It shows people on space and uh, uh, a hash, I don't know, hash, 
track. The people walk in space with a mobile device left the uh, track. And uh, when you overlap all tracks, it's integration map yeah. done by people. Well, yes. So it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it's nice. Yeah. Well, I had exactly the same question, so <laughs> uh, I will move to uh, uh, just a comment on the second presentation because it raises so many questions that I really feel compelled to, to say something about it. Um, the issue of um, the digital fabrication and, and uh, to to really help or not solving the, uh, the the problem of housing is actually a, 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 a I would say false false issue because uh, housing industry is moved by you know systems of uh, uh, production of capital basically. But it has nothing to be uh, to, to do with uh, the needs of uh, the housing needs of people. And uh, the good example that you have to see that is uh, what's happening in China. All those uh, cities that are being built and they just have 20% occupation and things like that. So it's not a, 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 a about <coughs> producing housing. It's just producing capital. Yes. And also the reason why. Uh, people are so interested in uh, digital fabrication uh, and that applying that in the production of housing is not to solve uh, also uh, the needs of those that uh, have the um, uh, needs of those that don't have houses because then we need very cheap uh, production and again uh, digital fabrication does not produce cheap housing and I can tell you one example. Uh, I asked directly Larry Sass about the cost of that uh, uh, house that he produced, and he told me it was uh, $50,000, which is probably not that much, but I produced a house of the same size for, uh, um, it was actually an extension of, uh, of an existing house, and the idea is to make a, a kind of a luxury thing, and it cost almost, uh, the same. So it was very good construction uh, and, and it was more or less the same price, actually cheaper. <laughs> it, might, yeah, I mean, it might be in the future to get uh, a bit cheaper. Yes, yeah. of course. The first thing that you did, I agree with you, but um, on, on the difference, let's say, on the other side. Uh, Techniques like that, as any production technique, it gets lowered by numbers. Yes. Well, the first time we built something, or the first 3D thing that we did, like that I did many years ago, it was like in order to test your 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 idea, it was like a hundred pounds. Like so, it was like uh, you do only one, and then you have to submit the second one. It wasn't as a student, you couldn't pay like a hundred pounds yeah. every time you want to build like a ten by ten. Uh, uh, powdery, powdery thing. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it will be somewhere in the middle, though, because it's yes. I mean, the materials nowadays is like a very uh, uh, posh-looking design thing that you would say, oh, it's a 3D printed house, so it's going to be expensive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> or a fabric, no, not 3D printed, but like a laser cut or CNC fabricated house. So at the moment, I think it's like a niche market. Uh, or if I want to have like my my design in my, yeah. no problem. Well, if, if we look into um, into what digital fabrication has produced some success, we see that it's basically added value uh, products, like for instance jewelry. Okay, it's already already being done, and it's profitable. Yeah. And the reason why is that we're talking about an added value uh, product. So in that case. It really, uh, it really helps. It really improves industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I agree with this. I, I, I also talk, talk about it, and um, I think that uh, the issue is that uh, we have to uh, one size no longer fits all. So the information-based society no longer wants 
this world, but I, instead of saying who's, who I want to say Raquel. So I think that mass customization is the, the, the way to go, and digital fabrication allows us to do that. So maybe the, the housing problem is that it's too expensive, the scale is too big, but maybe uh, furniture. I think that, that it's a uh, great uh, portion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have two questions uh, for you and for the leads. Um, you are trying just these uh, models related with cork in, in walls, not in, on pavement, pavements. For example, in rehabilitation, uh, pavements is always a problem when you want to keep the, the wood and uh, you want to make the new installations and and, the, and so it is quite difficult to uh, to make it compatible to match um, the floor the floor? There, there are some materials already mm -hmm. like ready and so on that gives mm -hmm. that possibility to, um, to make bathrooms mm -hmm. and with no problems on humidity but with cork could be really interesting to study that um, if it was possible that's why I was uh, saying you are only studying walls. And then okay, can I ask you that? Yeah. The, well, the problem with cork is not uh, uh, impermeable. So mm -hmm. You have this problem with cork is it's like a sponge. You see, it's, yes, it, but we it goes. Uh, 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 so my experience with slabs, with wooden uh, floors, is that it's not that expensive compared with. Uh, Concrete structure. You can re repair uh, one of these buildings mm -hmm. with wooden uh, beams at the same price as a, as a concrete nowadays. You can, I can. I have, I have done projects like that. So the, uh, the engineers tell me it's the same. Replacing uh, beams, uh, wooden beams, existing wooden beams. You can do it with wood, uh, wood or you can get concrete wood, uh, slab. The problem with concrete is that you cannot. I cannot put a slab, a concrete slab here without having uh, um, pillars here. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. And the, the other one we were, you were saying is how can I make a um, bathroom tub on top of this, not a bathroom tub, but the pavement, the pavement on top of this. With, with cork, the, there, is, there are solutions with cork already, with this type of cork. But uh, what they work like is that you have to have a, a solid uh, patio space, you have to put it on top, and then you add your pavement on top of it. Mm -hmm. They always work like, works like this. Uh, this but the problem is always the thickness. Well, the, the cork, you cannot produce cork with less than two centimeters mm -hmm. thick. Well, you can go to one, but it's really fragile. Mm -hmm. And this type of cork that I'm using here, it's a uh, uh, a denser cork. It's not the one you put inside walls, it's the one you put on facades. Mm -hmm. So it's more expensive. It's really not profitable to use this type of cork in, to hide it. Mm -hmm. It makes it only makes sense to put it on if you're showing it. The, otherwise, it's not uh, viable. Uh, that's, that's why also your, your pictures have like uh, the core showing. The core was, yeah. was the feature. was the feature. I mean, you, you wanted to expose it. Yes. But my question would be whether you it's worth being at the back, or it's it's kind of better. Well, cork, like cork expression is, as well. It's both. But cork, cork is the it's, a, it's used mainly for insulation material. You can use it also for sound absorption. It's it's not very as good as for insulation. And uh, the, the problem with cork compares with other insulation materials like uh, uh, wood, uh, wool wood. This is that it's much expensive, almost twice as expensive. So it's not used in partition walls because of that. You can have a, a cheaper solution. Why would you use cork if you can have a cheaper solution? So in order to make it competitive, you have to bring an added value. And the only added value, but well, one of the added values of cork is that you can show it. It's, it has a special odor that the wood rule doesn't have. You cannot show the rule. You have to put it inside the wall. Cork, you can show it, and you can make things on cork. It's easy to work on. You can put on a CNC, and you can drill it. You can do whatever. 
and it's, it stays like that. It's, easy, it's very cheap to work on a CNC because you don't need, need to, like wood, you have to work it after. You have to clean it, you have to, um, well, there's a lot, a lot of work on top. With cork, you don't need it because the CNC goes through and there's only dust, you can vacuum clean that and it's okay. Well, the second question, okay. thank you. <laughs> Well, we made an art workshop together in 2009, and it was after um, a small study, and the team that made the small study um, relating to space intakes and also um, the normal size studies, uh, inquiries, and so on. And uh, we made an international workshop with four countries, and uh, we the name of the workshop was New Cartographies, How to Produce New Cartographies Nowadays. And, um, and, the, 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 and, the, and the purpose of that workshop was try to, to, um, to work with uh, these groups that came from different countries and even from people from Oporto and um, through perception and reading of the city, how can we manage to represent and try to find new representations of cartography? And because space index, the, the lines and the, the, the red and the, the blues and the, uh, doesn't give us the, the necessary information and doesn't allow us to, to put more information. So I think these examples and the, the things that we develop with uh, through these years are really interesting because you have crossed uh, yes. the, the things that we were talking about. We were talking about this. But anyway, it's just one more thing. I, I don't think you need to, for me, it's not needed to have the um, information updated all moments. I remember an artist that came here in 2001 to so the uh, capital of culture. It was a German uh, artist and uh, he made the photograph of the limits of the town. And the purpose of this artist is to come here 10 years and 10 years and to picture, to have a picture of the same place and see the transformation of the place uh, in 10 years and 10 years. So I to have a picture of one moment, uh, it's really interesting, and then to compare some years ago, and to have the information always updated, maybe doesn't allow you to read the transformation. Yes, that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Online, uh, the on ongoing information is that it's critical, this is that sometimes yeah, you have to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where to? I can 
I can tell you exactly where, but the idea is this is to do something in photography. Like so, an example, you like the street view of Google Maps. Yes. It's nice it's when you see it like, oh, it was photographed some years ago, but yes. now it's different. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's the same thing. But you, you can do it here by framing. If you, instead of uh, when I, uh, if, if I pick the, the, the light pad and I put the, 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 the cartography, and if I frame the image, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a picture of a moment. Mm -hmm. I think that we can do, we already can do it. The, the, the on, ongoing, it's, uh, I don't know. You, you are also with the possibility to ask ASA and CIA. Yes. That's the ongoing. We are competing with NSA. <laughs> Nowadays, without the resources of the NSA and CIA, the problem is that nowadays you don't really need the NSA. Yes. If you go, no, no, no. If you go, and it's very frightening. If you go to a conference uh, that is organized either by, uh, by Facebook or there are Facebook guys, guys, researchers from Facebook, presenting their internal research that they did, of course, two years ago. So imagine how, how, what's the today's research? And I know, I mean, I know because I've done also some work with Vodafone, for example. So the the tracking that Vodafone can do internally, because you've got a device with you all the time, is very, very good. It's, it's extremely good. But if you see what, just uh, if you go as an intern, like uh, an unpaid student or whatever, yeah, postdoc. To, to Facebook and work for them, uh, you can do you can do any question you want with the data they want. So the the question might be uh, why? Uh, let's find why Tassos likes uh, uh, I don't know color red because of his working patterns. You don't know why, but they've got so much data. So they can do relational models, they, can, they, they know that I'm here now, no, they actually know that I'm in this building, that's the easiest thing to know. And how many other people that have uh, Facebook on their phone. Uh, they know that I like how many bands, you know, they, they know that yesterday I was in that restaurant and then I went to that bar. <laughs> 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 that was with you and you know. <laughs> huh? I didn't yeah, no, okay. And so it is really, if you see a presentation by these guys, but one of these guys, it's really frightening how much data they've got. So that, that thing for them is going to be, if they give you the mission, that's the, that's the key, they've got the data, but they won't give it to you. Uh, they could do it like yes. in the most beauty, crazy way possible. Because it's a lot of data. And that's what they do. They sell your life to someone else. Not your life. I mean, they do analysis on so specific and weird stuff. They aggregate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the aggregated data that they've got for you. But the questions, because I, I do an internet work, the questions you can ask can be very, very yeah. weird. No, no, you don't really care about this, but because we can do it, just, just do it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was a question uh, about your. Uh, uh, sexual preference based probably on whether you like a lot of uh, fish restaurants or something or whatever it can be like something totally unrelated and they will say that the average population a male population that is a uh, heterosexual or whatever uh, likes I don't know uh, fish restaurants less than I don't know, yeah. vegetarian, yeah. whatever, yeah. That's, that's probably, yeah. it might be, for, uh, my is for. they can do uh, weird stuff, it, 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 it. so something like that, I think in the future will be more open, so yes. I see, I see it going yeah. more forward and so real time. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about, I, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen uh, the last uh, uh, Double Seven movie, no, it's actually about controlling information. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's, there's always, there's always a, a bad guy in the movie, right? And he wants to conquer the world. And in this case, he wants to conquer the world by controlling all the information. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't, don't. <laughs>
he knows that. <laughs> a very luxury solution. <laughs> A very, very expensive solution, a very high-end solution. <laughs> I don't want to see the report to some of the people who ask me the way, but I want to ask you something I see here. But um, I see your uh, presentation. Um, you know, it puts a problem here that uh, it's uh, very well direction to our students. When they hear those, many of our presentations, they say, well, I have to study this, some, well, these things. You see, we say that he's not making the program. He's using the, the software. Well, David in and uh, I had the position, research also, but, well, this, uh, this kind of methods uh, have many, many understandings that demand many and many skills. There are the guys that don't listen to, they say, the user interface of the digital tool. There are, uh, no nothing about anything. There are the other guys that uh, can translate architectural Problems and problems in software, and they dialogue with the other, and they dialogue with the architects. The architects that, as David, use these uh, uh, these tools with great uh, research improvement, there will be in the future thousands of architects that will use these uh, uh, these digital tools kind of tools in the, you know, in the manner they use, I mean, the same way they use AutoCAD or something. Uh, today they don't know uh, anything about how AutoCAD is made. They don't need to know. Well, it's to our students, uh, to these are to our students. This, uh, you don't know to need, you don't need to know uh, all these intricacies and technical intricacies, but, but uh, I think we can have uh, and uh, uh, to think how you can uh, use this in your own, own problems. <coughs> yes, as I said, I, 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 my approach to modern methods and the novel process was do not because I'm interested in modern methods per se. I need to approach to modern methods because of my research subject, informality, self organization, whatsoever. So I felt that the the, the approach that I used to do was enough to uh, reach the complexity of the problem that I had as a research subject. So that's why I uh, approach, I, I get close to uh, from methods to try to uh, complement all the other uh, uh, field work that informality and self-organization has a lot of field work. But sometimes field work is okay. You have field work and then what you can do. How can you establish parameters from the, the excessive field work that you do? It's, it's sometimes the, the problem that, that you have when you deal with this kind of subject. And the, that's why I, I get close to these uh, things and I, I, I've been learning with it also. Like, you know, is there, is, 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 he already teach me something. We thought of it also. Uh, so it's, it's a learning process for me also. But due again to my research object, my, my interest is this day. What, what I need to do, I do to improve the knowledge I have on my research subject. Uh, so it's not the starting point, it's, it's a way to. Okay. Thank you. Now we want lunch in the basement. Please don't forget your Thank you.